All right, so in this video, uh, I am going to try to create the classic game uh, three in a row, uh, only using ChatGPT. So I won't be doing any of the development myself. Hopefully, the idea is to set a series of questions for ChatGPT and then see if it can help me write out all the code that I need. And uh, we'll see how that works out if I have to do some of the editing myself. I am aware that I could, in theory, just ask the full questions for ChatGP3, you know, create a, a, a three in a row game for me. But the idea here is to experiment a little bit how much we can break this into smaller queries because then we can know how we can actually use that for when we are doing the development ourselves. Because if I only write that, that's probably not the use case that I have in my everyday programming. So. I'm going to do this in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and I'm going to use this index.html to show you, uh, you know, the progress, and I'm going to uh, enter that into a Sublime file here, index.html, that's local on my computer. So let's start off. So create an HTML document that has a three by three table and an h1 tag above it that says three in uh, goodness I can't get it a row now I want to start off simple like this to just kind of uh, draw the canvas that I have and then see if I can add functionality to the canvas moving on but first I want to design the actual game so let's see what it generates for me here So it actually uh, gave me the title three in a row as well, not something I explicitly asked for, but you know, ChatGPT being smart as it is. And as you can see, it's actually generating the table with all these cells in it. So if I just copy this code and then use it uh, in Sublime and paste it, oops. Save it and let's see what it's generated for us. So, all right, we can see that we have the title, we have the H1 tag. What we don't see here is a table and it's probably because it doesn't have a border that's visible. So what I'm gonna ask now is for it to, uh, yeah, that kind of helps, but I wanna continue. I do have questions, why is it not giving me any, the ability? All right, sorry about that. So um, please, edit the above so that the table has a um, one pixel border that is gray. Let's see what happens here. So now it's modifying my HTML. Yep, and just put a little bit of simple CSS to set a border for this. So uh, yeah, just gonna let it finish so I can copy it again. Let's paste that, save it, see what that looks like. Oh my goodness, uh, I'm not exactly sure what, what happened there. So the problem here is that it actually set the border on the level of the table rather, rather than the uh, level of all the rows and all the cells. So I'm gonna change that question so that it says, uh, please edit so that all the TD elements have a border of one, one pixel that is gray. All right, giving it another shot. I wonder if the way that Google, I'm sorry, not Google, I'm always thinking Google because they do a lot of this, but I wonder if um, ChatGPT does it like this, so that it feels like you know, you're following the progress of it or if it's actually generating things in the background. It's probably the latter. But this seems like it's gonna work. Cool, so let's copy that paste it, save it, refresh, 
And yeah, we can see that we have a table, but it's ultra small, right? So I'm zooming it here so you can see it a little bit. So we need to set some, uh, some actual size uh, elements to this table. So uh, please, well, I keep saying please as if I'm, I'm talking to Bert, have the TD element have a minimum width of 50 pixel and the same height. Also, let's see if I can, you know, have it be designed beautifully just with the query. So also give it a pleasant design. Can't spell pleasant. Let's see here. Yep, so let's see if we run this. All right, so the first, for the first time, we have some style attributes that are written in the header, giving some design. Pretty cool. Height, we had understood that as well. Background color, so we gave it a background color of light blue. Um, See what this looks like. So not much on the styling side of things, but I think this is actually going to be good enough. Um, so if we go and replace what we have here, so there we have it, three in a row, pretty cool looking. So I'm just going to ask you. Please center the um, table and, well, actually, please center everything. Let's see how that works out. Let's copy that code, let's paste it, refresh, I'm not sure what happened here, yeah, yeah, I was zooming early, so I understand, okay, so now everything is centered, so three in a row, here we have it, so now we have kind of the design in place, you know, not, not the most beautiful, but it'll do the work, and now what I want to do is add some functionality, so I want it to be so that when I click on one of these, it First gets an X value representing the first player. And the second time you click on one of these, there's an O value entered here. And uh, we want it to go, you know, uh, every second should be, you know, an X and every other uh, in between should be an O. So let's see how we can ask a question there to uh, chat GP3. So make it so that when I click on the TD elements, uh, an X gets set as content. I'm going to give it a little bit of help and you know put it in the string every other time, and every other time an O is set. So this is the first time that we're going to try to try to run a query that actually does a little bit of you know what developers would call programming. Let's see what happens. So at the top, starting off with the style as well, just like earlier. All right, so it's setting an uh, on click value through JavaScript to set the content of each element. And then we're going to see how it actually writes this um, function, the set content function. Probably going to do it in the bottom somewhere. There you have it. A function called set cell. 
yeah, it says the inner HTML, you know, it checks if it's empty. So this is really cool. Didn't explicitly ask for this, but it checks if it's empty and then checks, you know, whose turn it is by classic way that you do this in programming with the modules where you try to, uh, uh, yeah, see what the modules when you divide by two is basically really, really cool. So I'm pretty sure this is actually going to work. So paste that. Obviously, this is not the prettiest way to do it to have as much redundant code as it has here, but it'll do the job. So for whatever reason, I lost the centered element of it, but yeah, I'll get back to that later why that is. So let's see what happens when I actually click on the T, the element. There's the X. There's the O, X, O, X, O, X, O, X, O. This is really cool. This is really cool. Now, the problem here is that I am not able to clear the board now as I played it once. So I need a button here that gives me the, op the ability to uh, reset the game. So let's see how we can do that. So I'm going to say add a button below that has the text restart game um, when I click that button all the TD elements should get the value and basically empty all right so let's see if it's able to pull this off this is, I mean we're doing this over and over but I'm so amazed by what it's able to do and uh, the fact that I haven't added any of my own programming to this point is pretty uh, mind-boggling, really. Uh, I can't believe how well it works. And, you know, if if you're watching this and still thinking, yeah, this is not going to be used by developers in the future, I, I don't know if we're seeing the same thing, basically. I see this being really a, a tool of the future that's going to be used on an everyday basis by most developers. And if you're not learning right now how to use it, oh, look at that beautiful, an on-click button called Restart Game. Let's see how it actually writes the, uh, the feature. So we have the set content function. Now we're going to get the function Restart Game. Get elements by tag for each and every uh, runs through all of them, gives them an empty value. Oh, that's so beautiful. Couldn't have done it better myself. So if I copy the code, paste it, so the only thing that's off right now is my design, so I would have to fix that. But let's see what happens now if I play a little bit and let's pretend we're playing. So we have XO, XO, X, and now we're going to get three in a row, and I'm going to figure out, all right, I have three in a row. So I want to play again, I click on restart game, and there you have it, it cleans everything up. Now, obviously a little bit of, a, uh, of an issue here. Let's see if I can clean that up with just one query. Please make everything centered and have a beautiful design. Now this is, I would say this is, you know, the first pretty ambiguous question that I've asked of it. So this can be interpreted in any way because, you know, I guess beauty is very subjective. But let's see what happens. Background color, color lavender. So now it's actually making some changes, you know, on the level of the table, the really interesting. Even a hover effect. Oh, on this sky blue color. This will be really interesting to see what it's gonna look like now when I copy all of this. This is actually turning out to be a pretty big file, so I'm really Really overall impressed that it's able to do all of this. I don't know if chat open AI has some sort of limit as far as how much code it can generate for you, but this far it, ha it hasn't been causing any problems for me. And I was just writing out the earlier functions that were you know, working great as is. Right. 
Let's copy this code. Paste it. <laughs> Look at that. My goodness. And let's see what happens when I hover. So as you can see, it gets a slightly different color. Still overall really beautiful. X's and O's are working. They even have a color of themselves. Like if I can click on restart game, this button is looking great. Yeah, I mean, all of this is so amazing. Obviously, I can continue asking questions, you know, to define who's player one, who's player two, and, uh, you know, the tougher one would be to actually define uh, when somebody has three in a row so that the game tells you. I'll give that as a last shot to see if we can actually pull that off. I don't think that it will be able. Uh, but let's give it a shot. Um, if I'm not able to pull it off, you just see the, the video end here. And that'll be that. But for the fun of it, let's see how far we can push it with the chat GPT. So, you know, we, we know that we have all of these TD elements. Um, so create a function that can detect that three of the TD rows in a row have either an X or an O oh, and uh, you might be thinking you know you're asking the question pretty unambiguously um, uh, or rather ambiguously right now and uh, you're probably right but I want to see how much you can understand as well and the way that I would imagine that it could be able to, to implement this is to create some sort of a race you know that has an uh, identification uh, how can I say it that identifies which of these TD elements are next to each other and all the combinations that would yield a three in a row. Let's see what happens if I run this. It claims that it's going to be able to do it, but well, if it's able to do this, like, uh, and obviously I still haven't told it what to do once it actually identifies a three in a row. So I'll see what it actually writes out here as far as a function. Yeah, uh, the, the whole system kind of broke down at this point. So it got a little bit too much for it. I'm not sure why this might be something that's, you know, part of the open uh, chat AI. I can't even get the wording right anymore. But yeah, overall, still amazing. This is the very, very early phases of chat GPT that we're looking at right now. And if you're not incorporating this into your development right now, um, you're going to be missing out. So you can get so much more done in so much less time if you actually learn how to use this. I mean, look at this beauty. Look at this beauty. I'm amazed. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, yeah, talk to you soon.